Have you watched The Wandering Earth 2, the latest Chinese science fiction blockbuster? I was deeply moved by the story. It conveys a message that we are in a community with a shared future for humanity, and that's the topic which I will talk about with Professor Mahoney at East China Normal University. I'm Wang Qian with Xinhua News Agency. We are heading for East China Normal University, not far from here. Mahoney is an American professor who teaches Marxism and politics and international relations at ECNU. here for 12, almost 13 years. I teach a number of courses. I teach courses mainly related to political philosophy, but uh, the course that I'm most known for perhaps is I, I teach uh, seminars on Marxism. I, we have an international program where we bring foreign students here from around the world for a master's and a PhD. What we want to do is create this master's and PhD program for foreign students and they will come here and they will learn about Chinese politics, right? Because one of the problems is that a lot of the students overseas, they don't get a real understanding of how China really works. They don't really understand how the, how the political system works. They get a lot of misinformation. And so when we started the program in 2015, we started seeing all these foreigners, including from the United States, from Europe, from Africa, Central Asia, South Asia, Latin America, they all came because they all wanted to know something about China. They all understood that the stories that were being told about China in international media, by foreign scholars, by particularly Western scholars, somehow was a, was a misrepresentation. No, it's, it's, you know, for many years, it's been one of the beautiful garden campuses in China. But I think in the last 10 years, we've had a lot of uh, capital improvements. We've had a lot of development. You know, it's, it's really become a much nicer place, a much more beautiful place since I've been here. Let's start with a movie. The Wandering Earth 2, the lazy Chinese science fiction blockbuster, I think, is a great movie of a community with a shared future for humanity. As a professor of politics and international relations, how would you paraphrase the concept in your own words? I thank you for this question, and I really appreciate you mentioning this film. I'm a big fan of science fiction. China is now one of the most advanced technological societies in the world. China has its own space station. We can now watch films like this, and we can believe in them. We can believe that China has a role to play, not only in space, but also for the greater good of mankind. What's good for China, and what China is good at, including uh, uh, advancing and raising its own people out of poverty. This demonstrates this incredible capacity for self-transformation, right? That gives us incredible lessons for the rest of the world. Other countries are looking at, when they look at China, countries from Africa, Latin America, South Asia, they're looking at this incredible progress that China has made. They want to understand what China has done and how they can replicate those results for themselves. For me, this is a very fascinating concept. The only way that we can survive in a world with existential crises like climate change, as we saw with the pandemic, with the threat of conflict as we see now in Ukraine, the only way we can survive is, is if we work together, if we find common ground and build that shared future together. In the past years, the concept of a community with a shared future for humanity has been highlighted in China's key documents, top-level meetings. In your view, why did the Chinese government keep stressing on it? We know that China is a peace-loving country. This is the long, deep root in history of this concept. However, in recent years, we have seen this very aggressive positioning from the United States trying to uh, put this containment policy in place to try to knock down 
China's development, even triple China's technological development, right? So in this context where the United States has been telling, really, all these lies, all these lies about China being an aggressor, China's saying, no, no, listen, we want peaceful development. We want win-win development, right? And so China has been emphasizing this story. It's not a new story. It's an old value. It's an old principle. But China is saying it again and again. This is what we want. We want a shared future. We know that some members of the international community, some members of the Western international community don't listen. However, there are a lot of countries around the world that have very, very positive relations with China. And these countries have enjoyed uh, very clear benefits. For example, the Belt Road Initiative, uh, funding from AIIB. We see China playing a leading role in organizations like the RCEP. All of these are signaling China's willingness to engage in multilateral ways, in ways that pursue peace, peace growth, and development. To build a community with a shared future, China has been implementing it with concrete actions. What are the examples best manifest Chinese efforts in delivering the concept? For example, uh, in 2020, when the United States uh, had its catastrophic response to the pandemic, China not only uh, recovered and began to produce the vital goods that the rest of the world needed to survive, Right? China also took a leading role in developing vaccines. So China helped the global economy recover, and then it began to promote vaccines as a global public good. And this helped millions of people around the world to survive economically, but also to survive once they got infected. Right? So this is one very compelling example. Another example is what we're seeing more recently with one of the aspects of this concept of a shared future, which is the Global Security Initiative. First great victory here is China successfully mediating the resumption of diplomatic relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran. This is major, this is an incredible breakthrough. How would the vision help countries with different social systems, histories, cultures, and the levels of development to face challenges and solve problems together. We're still stuck in a global system that is dominated by this old uh, American Cold War model, right? China has been trying to promote reform of multilateral organizations, trying to promote more democracy in international affairs, but the United States, as the hegemon, has resisted this progress, right? So this is the, the, the first challenge. The second challenge, of course, is that American power is substantially based on the privilege given to the U.S. dollar. The problem is that this has become abusive in the international system, and the U.S. abuses the dollar and its domination of the financial system to try to impose its will on other countries. Everyone knows that it's a problem, and we, we've really begun to talk about it more and more since 2008, when we had the global financial crisis, and then we see it now because of the resulting inflation. All of these have had profound spillover effects and cost for the rest of the world. So when China is talking about, okay, how can we move past fossil fuels? How can we move past uh, buying energy in dollars? How can we work together through green development? All of these are efforts to respond to these crises in constructive ways that move past the old model, that try to deal with some of these problems that we have to solve if we want to survive in the future.